Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, today I'm going to be talking about magic clips. I'll be sharing another Minikin season 2 preview, new faux leathers in the shop. The book review for today will be Southwest Modern by Christy Schroeder. I have a demonstration on how to add a needle sleeve to any project and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, thanks so much for sticking around. Uh, if you were watching us live, we had a bit of technical difficulties, especially on Facebook, but also on YouTube. We saw from the comments that many of you stuck around, so thank you so much, and I apologize for the delay. Fingers crossed that everything works okay this time with the sound and the buffering. Um, I see um, Mady from South Florida. Denise is here. Hey everybody. And uh, again, thank you for your patience. Things don't always go as planned with technology. Looks like Danny got everything back on track. We decided to start the show over from the beginning because I know a lot of you missed um, the first, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes due to the sound issues. So again, I appreciate you sticking with us. And gosh, I was starting to sweat there for a minute because we have all the lights on in the studio. And then when things, things started going wrong, I was like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? Danny, uh, give me an update, what's going on? So um, hopefully uh, this is a very small lesson if you're having any difficulties this week as far as your sewing projects go. Please stick with it. Um, it'll work out for you in the end. Hopefully we can make it to the end of tonight's chat without any further difficulties. And again, that, that comment up though. Uh, I'm so glad that you're here. What, what'd you say, Danny? That's oh, Danny says to leave this comment up. Tammy, Tammy says, Danny, you are awesome. <laughs> I saw a lot of other comments. Everyone had... Uh, Danny, you're the bomb. Danny had faith in Danny. Danny for Danny. <laughs> Love you guys. Don't inflate his head too big because I don't want to have to hear about it for the rest of the night. But anyway, thank you guys. So um, as a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And also as a reminder, the things that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more that way. So um, just kind of an example of the fact that I purchase uh, these things that I talk about during the show myself. Um, this company that I'm about to talk to now, about now, Taylor Seville, they emailed me, I think it was last month, wanting to send me product that I could review on the show. And I said, um, I appreciate the information. Um, they sent me a ca like an online catalog of all their products. I said, I love the information, but um, thank you for the offer, but I'm just gonna go ahead and buy these tools myself so that I could try them out because I know I've mentioned it recently, when you get free things, um, especially I feel like I'm a nice person when I get free stuff, I feel obligated to say nice things about the free stuff that I got because I got it for free. And I'd rather just tell you the truth about what I think about things and not have any kind of strings attached. So um, today I'm gonna be talking about magic clips and these are available in two different sizes, so you may be familiar with using Wonder Clips. This is sort of a slightly different um, take on Wonder Clips, and again, two separate different companies. The company that makes Wonder Clips does not make the Magic Clips, but I thought these were really cool, and people mentioned them to me recently so that I, I wanted to talk to, to you about them on the show. So I'm gonna slide over to the side camera on my sewing machine so that I can show you how they work. So again, here's the, the package of the Magic Clips, and these are size small, and there's 12 clips included in the package. I pulled out a couple of clips just so that I could show you how they work. So let me hold this so that you can see the two markings on the clips. So there's a quarter of an inch marking and a half inch marking. So when I first pulled these out of the package, I thought mistakenly that this half inch marking meant that this measured a half inch from the end of the clip to the marking and same thing with the quarter inch marking, and that's actually not true. So the quarter of an inch marking is the first marking, and that corresponds to this first marking over here on the clip, and the half inch marking corresponds to the second marking, which is basically level with the opening on the clip. So the purpose of these clips is that they hold the layers of fabric, and you can sew over them because it's just a flat piece of metal right here. So I went ahead and prepared a piece of foam interfacing with some duck cloth on it, and I thought I would try to sew these two layers together so that you can simulate and see how the clips would work with sewing the layers of a bag together. 
So I'm going to go ahead and start by clipping one of the clips at the quarter of an inch mark. And you want to make sure that that quarter of an inch mark is slightly further away from the edge of the fabric because you need to clear um, your needle. So you don't want to be sewing the needle over the metal. You want to have it just to the side so that you can clear the needle. And again, I'm going to leave the clips in as I'm sewing because you can sew over them as long as, again, your needle's not going through the metal. Okay, so that's my half inch seam allowance. Um, this certainly will take a tiny bit of getting used to just to make sure you're not sewing over the metal. So I'm going to take a second pass with that half inch seam allowance. And this one's a little bit easier to leave it further away from the edge of the fabric. So I'm going to line it up not exactly on the half inch, about an eighth of an inch away to give my needle a bit, a bit of extra room. And again, I'm going to sew using half inch seam allowance for this one. So this is good not only for bag making, but for quilts as well. And as you can see, it's, it's nice to sew over. I feel like the half inch seam allowance is a little bit easier because the clips have a little bit more to hang on to. And I think this will be especially useful for sewing through a curve because especially I've noticed making a bag sewing through a curve as I'm taking my wonder clips off, sometimes the fabric shifts and that's um, especially a little bit troublesome when sewing through the curve because you want to make sure you're for sure sewing the two layers of fabric so that they're even. So again, these are magic clips. This is the size small, which I think will be especially useful for bag making. And again, nice thing about these is you can leave them clipped on your fabric and your presser foot can just go right over them. All right, so um, time for the Minikins uh, season two preview. Oh, before we get over to that, um, Danny's gonna throw a question on the screen. Um, I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments, what do you use to hold fabric? while you're sewing do you use pins do you use wonder clips uh, let me know in the comments i've actually seen people tell me in the past that they actually especially with thick layers of the bag actually use staples to staple the edges of the the fabric and then they can sew over it and either leave the staples in or take them out after the fact so i thought that was pretty interesting haven't tried that out myself yet but let me know in the comments what do you use to hold the layers of your fabric together okay so let's get over to the minikins season two preview as I told you on previous shows, every Sunday and Tuesday live show from now until the end of October, I'll be sharing a sneak peek of one of the projects in the new Minikin Season 2 bundle. So that'll be 13 brand new patterns and videos. We've decided the release date will be October 31st. Kind of a bit of a trick or treat for the adult sewists out there. And this is the third project that I'm showing and it's called the Sewing Room Stand. So let me show you the back of the stand first. As you can see, it's a three-dimensional stand. It's got a bunch of interfacing and Peltex to make it stand upright and be sturdy. So one side has mesh pockets and you can use that to hold all of your sewing room tools that you'll be using um, maybe when you're out and about traveling to a sewing class. The other side of the stand has, in the front, it has sort of an overhang and this overhang is a bit padded and I call it a pillow. So this pillow kind of holds a tablet or an iPad so that it doesn't fall off the stand. So you can either use your tablet uh, vertically or horizontally. And I know since I teach in person also that a lot of people like to take their tablet to a sewing class and look at the PDF pattern while they sew on the tablet. So I thought this would be handy and it actually folds up when you're finished with it um, because it has Velcro. So you can leave your tools in the stand and it Velcros shut so that you can take um, all of your tools with you and store your iPad in whatever uh, holder or case that you normally take your iPad with. So that's the sewing room stand. It, it'll be part of Minikin season two, and that comes out on October 31st. And we'll be showing more projects, so stay tuned to our future live shows this month and throughout October. Okay, also new in the shop, we have three new colors of faux leather. So the three new colors are sepia, which is a really nice uh, coppery brown, like a warm colored brown. I definitely wanted to get a turquoise colored faux leather and we're calling this one sky blue. So this is a really pretty shade of blue. And then also lucky penny. So this is a coppery, rosy colored uh, faux leather. Um, these are in addition to the three colors of neutrals that we already had. So we already had black in the shop, rose gold, and silver. Black is by far the best seller. Rose gold is a close second. And I just wanted to show you this Tudor bag. You may have seen it before, but I made this Tudor bag using the faux leathers. This is the black one, of course. And because the faux leathers are only 
0.6 millimeters in thickness. They're thin, easy to sew with, they do not stretch. And I actually made these straps with four leathers of the faux leather, so I assembled these kind of like what I would do with quilting cotton straps, like double fold bias tape, four leathers. Normally when I'm using cork or vinyl, I use two to three leathers due to the thickness, but these are nice and thin and easy to sew with. And they have a nice uh, kind of top grain pebble texture to them as well. So three new colors are in the shop right now. We'll be shipping them out starting tomorrow and hope you like those new colors. I had a lot of requests, especially for this turquoise one right here. So Danny's favorite part of the show, go ahead and let us know in the comments. If you're a bag lady or a bag dude, you can go ahead and type that in the comments right now. And um, if you've been with us for a little while, you'll know that the So Sweetness bag making community is um, outgoing, kind, supportive, and we're only as strong as our group members, and we have super strong group members across the board. If you're not already a member of the Facebook group, the link is in the description, and I hope you'll join us there. And there's also a link in the description for the So Sweetness groups by state or country. So if you'd like to join your local group, please do. A lot of the local groups are having meetups. Uh, the Ottawa group had a meetup today, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. And um, it's just a fun way to connect with people in person. And I heard a story, I think it was Charlie from the Connecticut So Sweetness group. When they had their meetup, they went to a quilt shop and they met um, some other people that were not part of the meetup, but were familiar with the patterns and they were sort of recruited to join the group. So just a fun way to, to meet other people in person, other sewists. Um, all right, uh, lately I've been reading letters once in a while and I re wanted to read this letter from Diane. I'm just gonna read the second half of her letter because it kind of relates to what I was just talking about with the Facebook groups in regards to making connections with other people in real life. And I just thought it was a great story. So th again, this is from Diane. Uh, Diane said, I recently retired after over 40 plus years in the workforce. Even though I really enjoy being retired and having all this sewing time, I find myself a little isolated at times. I was also starting to feel that this was fast becoming a lost art. Just this past June, I lost my sister to cancer and became a sewing machine, as Michelle Graham put it. I think it was my way of coping with her death. Your videos and Facebook group has been a valuable asset to me, both as a learning tool and a way to connect with people. This group is so wonderful, helpful, and compassionate. They are truly a godsend. Since I started watching your videos and joined the Facebook group, I find that I no longer feel so isolated. I actually feel that I am part of something. I must thank you and Danny for all that you are contributing to the sewing community. I cannot imagine the sewing community without you and your videos and patterns. I did also notice after going through all my bag patterns and organizing them that I already had some of your patterns. So glad I did this before I ordered more. I think I must, I, I must have almost all of your patterns except maybe one or two. I'm so looking forward to the new bundle and my fingers are waiting to press the add to my cart button. Um, and then Diane says uh, from one of your biggest fans. So first of all, thank you so much to Diane for the letter. And I think that's an important point that she made in her letter about isolation because I know certainly I don't normally connect with sewists that live around me in my day-to-day -day life. So the online sewing community is my support system since I don't have that support in real life. And I think it's important to connect with other people who have similar interests in you so that we don't become, as Diane said, isolated because I think that could easily happen, especially to me. Danny and I work from home and some days I, I don't really leave the house unless I have to go grocery shopping. And so it's really important to make those connections and feel like you're a part of something. So again, Diane, thank you so much for your letter. Um, as I mentioned a second ago, uh, the Ottawa So Sweetness group had a meetup today. Danny went on the live chat with them. And um, if you didn't know, um, when local groups have their meetups, we give away prizes. And uh, this month, the next month, we're giving away Minikin season two bundles, and that's a randomly drawn winner. And it's really fun not only to get on the video chats with the group while they're having their meetups. So we've seen groups have meetups at quilt shops. Um, I think a quilt show uh, was recently in Pennsylvania. That was where they had their meetup. So it's a lot of fun to see everyone in person and um, that you're meeting in person. So thank you for making those connections. And again, the link to the state and country So Sweetness groups are in the description. And I saw from an email that I got earlier, there's other groups that are having their meetups in the month of October. I know California is doing Secret Santa, so a lot of fun things going on with, with the local groups. Um, also a reminder, 
the Tudor Bag Sew Along is going on right now. Week three starts tomorrow. And if you haven't already joined, uh, there's still plenty of time to get in on that. Um, it's a five week leisurely sew along making the Tudor Bag. And I think last I heard there were probably over 330 people participating in that over in the Facebook group. So very exciting. Uh, we're also doing weekly prizes for that. So the weekly prizes are about a week or two delayed just to make sure that people that join in on the weeks um, can catch up. So the winner of the week one randomly drawn prize was Elizabeth Sawyer. So congratulations to Elizabeth. Um, I'll be emailing you your prize um, after the live chat tonight. And don't forget to keep up with the sew along. It's really easy to do. All you need to do is post your progress photos in each week's album in the Facebook group. And again, they're randomly drawn prizes, so all you have to do is take your progress photos to be entered in for those prizes. So if you enjoy our weekly chats and our sewing videos on bag making, we'd like to invite you, if you're watching on Facebook, to go ahead and hit the share button right now. And regardless, even if you're watching on YouTube, this goes for both YouTube and Facebook, um, if you'd humor us with hitting the like button, which looks like a little picture of a thumbs up. So the likes and shares help us out so so much youtube and facebook look very kindly on videos that get a lot of likes and shares and they consider sharing those videos with others that may be interested in them that they see have a similar interest based on other videos that they've watched in the past so thank you so much for your likes and shares they really help us out a ton all right so my book review for this week is a book called southwest modern it's written by christy schroeder i've actually met, met christy uh, i think once or twice in the past uh, she's very lovely and her book is just as lovely. So I'm going to uh, step over to the side camera and show you Southwest Modern. Okay, so this is Christie's book. There's 18 projects included in the book and it's kind of a travel oriented book with quilt patterns, which I thought was really cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, start showing you the inside of the book. So um, I feel like it's almost a coffee table book combined with quilt patterns because the photography is so beautiful and the quilts are all inspired by places in the United States. Okay, so besides the usual information on how to make um, half square triangles and paper piecing basics because both of those types of um, blocks are included in the book. Um, so the first chapter starts with West Texas wide open spaces. So again, the photography is just gorgeous. Besides the quilt patterns, Christy also lets you know her favorite places in each of the areas um, that she's visiting for the book. And then her, here's the first pattern, it's called Rustic. I really love, I'll have to say all of the quilts in the book are very graphic like this particular quilt. And I think, I'll, I think they're all made with solids, which I'm a really big fan of using solids and quilts. Um, but I felt like the instructions were very straightforward. Again, I love the travel little tidbits and different places discussed in the book. And there's also smaller projects like this one right here. Okay, so here's another quilt called Mesa, and I, I also appreciate that the quilts are taken, and there's Christy in this photo, the, the quilts photographs are taken in the backdrops that she's visiting. So really brilliant and a fantastic idea for the book. I think I might make this one first. I'm a really big fan of log cabins, and this is a huge one. So this one's called Chimney Trail, and it's made with a bunch of neutrals. And here's the finished quilt, again, gorgeous photograph that that quilt is photographed in. This is Marfa, a small desert town in West Texas. Again, Christy's favorite places in Marfa. And I, gosh, look at that graphic quilt and that backdrop. That's just beautiful. I love the blue of the sky matching with the blue in the quilt. And these are just fabulous projects. I'm actually kind of jealous. These photographs with the quilts are just so amazing. And what a unique idea for a book, like a travel inspired quilt book. All right, so I'm gonna flip through the rest of the project. Um, this one is foundation paper piece. The templates are, are all included in the back of the book and there's not very many. so. Um, just basic templates and the rest are made using either squares or half half square triangles 
Here's Sandio with a um, bit of stars incorporated in the quilt. I love this one, the black and white also. And there's another variation in the red. This is a mini quilt, so this one's 21 by 43 and a half. So that would be great for a wall hanging. And just a really fun book. I've never traveled to the areas in this book and I really want to after seeing all these photographs. Okay, so again, this book is called Southwest Modern. It's written by Christy Schroeder. And I have a link in the description. Christy did a, a short, uh, I think, 40-second video, um, kind of a trailer for her book. And there's some more photographs and videos incorporated in that trailer of the travels that she went on to photograph the book. So again, Southwest Modern, and that's a beautiful, beautiful book. Okay, so my demonstration for tonight will be how to add a needle sleeve to any project. And when I do my demonstrations, I like to, if possible, orient um, my tips to be added to any bag project. So for my example tonight, I'm gonna be showing how to add sleeves for packets of needles to the Creative Maker supply case. However, using these measurements, you can add a needle sleeve holder to any project. So if you have a small bag or pouch that you'd like to add it to instead, that'll work with some of these measurements as well. So I'm gonna step over to the side camera and again, my demonstration will be how to add a needle sleeve to any project. Okay, so the supplies that you'll need for the needle sleeve is you'll wanna have the, the piece of the bag that you'll be adding the sleeve to. So. For the Creative Maker supply case, I'll be adding the needle sleeve to the Creative Maker. And this is the panel that I have cut out from my lining fabric. And this is the portion of the project that, that I'll be attaching the needle sleeve to. Okay, so I have this lining fabric cut out attached to the interfacing already. You'll also need a few little pieces of fabric. So you'll need a piece of clear vinyl for each section of the needle sleeve. So you want the vinyl to be two and three quarters of an inch tall, and you want the width to be the same width as the project that you're attaching to. So my project is eight inches wide, so I cut my vinyl two and three quarters of an inch by eight inches. The other bits and pieces that you'll need is you'll need binding strips. So the binding strips, you'll need two for each of the pieces of vinyl. They're gonna be two and one quarters of an inch wide and the same length as the clear vinyl. And then you'll also need two zipper tabs for each piece of clear vinyl. And the zipper tabs I cut at three inches by one and a half inches. You'll need two of those as well as a zipper. Either a handbag zipper or a number three dress skirt zipper will work here. Either one is fine. I'm gonna be using a handbag zipper for this demonstration. Okay, so step one is that we'll be finger pressing the binding wrong sides together in half like this. And then I went ahead and pinned my binding against the top edge of the clear vinyl. And I sewed this using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So when I sewed this, I sewed with the fabric against the bed of my sewing machine. And I used my Teflon foot because the vinyl is a bit sticky. So the Teflon foot or a walking foot would work well for that. Again, that is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So because vinyl is, uh, it can melt, I just went ahead and finger pressed the seam toward the binding. And then I brought that folded edge down so that it was even with the edge that I could see through the, the clear vinyl. So I went ahead and took some wonder clips. Here's my wonder clips. Clip those in place. And then you're gonna stitch this press edge of the binding using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And this is what it looks like after you stitch it. Okay, so there's my clear vinyl with the binding attached. The next step is to prepare the zipper. So I went ahead and pressed the tab pieces, wrong sides together in half. I opened out the fabric and then I pressed in toward the center crease and refolded. So you'll need two tabs for each zipper and I went ahead and cut my zipper three quarters of an inch shorter than the length of the vinyl. And the reason that I cut it shorter is I wanna keep the zipper out of the seam allowance because when I go to sew the project together in top stitch, 
I don't want the zipper all the way in the seam allowance because the, the teeth, even though they're nylon teeth, it does get a bit chunky and bulky. And so that's the purpose of the tabs. They keep the zipper out of the seam allowance. So I went ahead and inserted the zipper so that it hit the center crease of the tab. I refolded the tab and then I stitched an eighth of an inch across the tab and you'll do the same thing for both sides. And again, that zipper is three quarters of an inch shorter than the length of my clear vinyl. Okay, so the next step, we're gonna attach that completed zipper to this edge of the clear vinyl with the binding. And I love using Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape. It's double-sided tape that's a quarter of an inch wide and it's great for holding layers of the fabric such as the zipper in preparation for attaching the binding. So I'm going to show you how to attach that Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape. So one side is immediately sticky. So I'm just going to go ahead and press that down with my fingers against the lower edge of that zipper from one end to the other. Just going to use a bit of pressure and then using my fingernail I'm going to peel back the paper and that will reveal the second side of the adhesive. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, that area that looks shiny, that's the second side of the adhesive. And I'm just gonna center that zipper right on top of that binding piece. So the binding will cover approximately a quarter of an inch of the zipper, and then it's ready to take over to the sewing machine, and I'm gonna stitch this down an eighth of an inch away from this top edge of the binding. Okay, so now we need to finish the top edge of the zipper. So to do that, Again, I went ahead and took a piece of binding and finger pressed it wrong sides together like this. And this time I'm gonna attach the binding to the wrong side of the zipper. So I went ahead and used my Wonder Clips and stitched this using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Again, that's on the wrong side of the zipper. And then for this one, you can actually press um, so that it's uh, pressed toward the binding. I'm gonna take this uh, pressed edge of the binding and I'm going to bring it down just so that it covers the stitching line from the previous step. So again I'm going to use my Wonder Clips to hold the layers in place and then this goes back over to the sewing machine and this lower edge of the binding is going to be top stitched using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay so this is what it looks like after it's been stitched in place. So this portion is actually finished. Depending on how big your project is, you'll need to complete several of these pieces right here. So again, here's my lining piece. I'm going to bring this first piece of the vinyl down so that it's even with the bottom edge of the project. And I'm going to pin this in place. And we're just going to keep adding more vinyl sleeves. So as many as you need to fill the whole project. So here's my second piece right here. Just imagine that that edge is already top stitched. And then again, you can use that Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape to hold that bottom edge. So I'm gonna add some right now. And we need to top stitch this top edge of the binding. And what that does is that separates the pockets so that it's not one continuous pocket. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to top stitch this edge of the binding and of course if you need to add more of these vinyl sleeves over here add as many as you need to to fill your whole project and what you want to do is you want to sew vertical dividers just from the binding down so basically just on top of the clear vinyl and it'll go through both the clear vinyl layer as well as your lining layer and what that does is it will create different sections in the pocket for all of your packets of needles so I measured out before the show and I felt that two and a half inches away from the left hand edge was suitable for sti a stitching line right here. And again, you'll want to use your Teflon foot or a walking foot. So every two and a half inches, you can sew a vertical line of stitching just on that clear vinyl right there. And then when you're finished, you'll have different sections for each of your different types of needles. And it'll be a zippered portion and you can do the same thing on this lower edge right here. So again, you can use those same measurements. Again, you'll want the clear vinyl to be two and three quarters of an inch high and as long as your project is. So this really can be adapted to any project. And I think the Creative Maker Supply Case would be really fun for 
making a needle holder or you can even make the small one into a needle holder. That would be really fun as well. So hope you enjoyed that demonstration and hope you can add that to your future projects, especially if you need a case to hold all of your different types of needles in your sewing room. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments what type of needle do you use the most often? Go ahead and type that in the comments right now. I usually use um, either an Organ 9014 needle or a Schmetz Microtex needle. Those are my two favorites, uh, but I do have other needles in my stash because I periodically work with garments. So I have needles for sewing with jersey. I have leather needles. I have all sorts of different needles. I have some for my serger as well. So uh, lots of different needles in the stash, certainly. So. All right, let's get over to the giveaway winner from last week before I announce the giveaway winner. Um, uh, actually, let me get to that giveaway winner first. So last week's winner was Mark Suppelfrick. So congratulations to Mark. Mark won uh, an upcoming Minikin Season 2 bundle. So um, go ahead and drop me an email, Mark, and I'll email you a coupon code for a free Minikin Season 2 bundle when they come out on October uh, 31st. All right, uh, I'm gonna answer a few questions live and then we'll get away, get over to this week's uh, giveaway question and giveaway entry. Um, so if you have any sewing related questions for me, question about uh, bag making or about a specific notion or tool, go ahead and let me know in the comments and I'll answer some questions live and then we'll get over to that great giveaway for the next Minikin season two bundle. When you're in the demo, they wanna know what kind of bundle you're using okay. and what was the fabric? manufacturer. And okay, great. Uh, Danny said there were a few questions while I was doing my demo. Uh, some questions were about the clear vinyl that I was using. What gauge was it? Um, normally in my patterns, I recommend uh, um, eight gauge to start out with because it's relatively on the thin side. And I feel like just about every sewing machine can handle that thickness. Um, that particular gauge was 12 gauge and I used it in uh, my Minikins project that I showed you on Tuesday. I think I have it around here somewhere. Possibly, yeah. Um, I showed this already, so it's okay to show, I guess, two previews in the same show, but uh, this was the 12 gauge that I showed in this uh, Minikin Season 2 project with the um, three-dimensional uh, clear vinyl in there. So either um, 8 gauge, 10 gauge, or 12 gauge, um, again, the higher gauges, uh, you'll want to make sure that your machine is heavy duty and can sustain sewing through those layers. Um, the other question Danny said was about what that pink fabric was that I was using, and that's a Moda Grunge fabric. And I have about, uh, I don't know, like 50 different colors of the Moda Grunge, and they also make it in polka dots. Um, it's really fun and a departure from the solids that I like using for quilts because it's sort of a solid with a bit of a texture to it, and it's usually monochromatic. Um, actually, th this project was made with the Moda, uh, Moda Grunge. This was the Moda Grunge polka dots, and I think the lining... Yeah, the lining was a darker purple solid, uh, also Moda Grunge. I know you can't see it that well because of my clear vinyl, but um, yeah, they, the Moda Grunge are very, very lovely fabrics. Okay, uh, Nancy wants to know what size needle do you use for the Oreo bag top stitching? So I normally use the same needle for constructing the bags as I do for the top stitching. And um, again, I use either an Organ 9014 or a Schmetz Microtex needle for the construction and the top stitching. Annie says, how do you dispose of your old needles? Um, I know some people use either uh, old medicine medication bottles, uh, little plastic bottles. Um, I, I know some sewing notion companies actually make plastic cases to dispose of needles in particular. I admit I'm a bit lazy and I normally uh, keep mine in a bit of old cardboard uh, with some tape on the sides and just throw a few needles in there. I have also some old plastic containers from when I buy my needles when I've used up all the needles in the container. So anything to safely get rid of your needles. Maybe you have another tip for how you dispose of yours. Let me know in the comments so everyone can see uh, what are the other ideas there are for disposing of needles. Jennifer says, can cork be used for straps? It sure can. Uh, personally, I prefer to have either a thickness of two layers or three layers for cork straps. Uh, I have a couple bags back here with cork straps. Actually, this Baker Street bag. Um, these are cork straps, uh, rose gold, and this is two layers. Let's see if I can reach over here. Uh, this Renegade bag is white cork, and this is also the cork straps, two layers as well. Uh, I don't have it up here, but I have an airplane bag that I made with the three layers for the cork straps, and 
Uh, what I did was the, the finished width of the strap is one and a half inches. I multiplied that by three, and then instead of folding so that the edges were aligned, I sort of folded in thirds so that I had three layers of the cork. So either two or three layers would be great. I feel like four layers is almost too much um, thickness for the cork though. Jerry says, is there any reason not to use the soft and stable on the lining of the bag and the pellon on the outer fabric? Um, you know, I don't know that I've ever made a bag with uh, Shape Flex on the exterior and the foam on the lining. Uh, the foam is certainly the more substantial. I have seen in the past though, a few people making the desktop cube with the interfacings reversed and they really liked that combination. But for a bag, I'd probably stick to having the Shape Flex on the lining fabric and the more substantial interfacing like the foam on the exterior. Laura says, what do you do when the foam is wrinkled from shipping? That's a great question. It also, the answer also depends on if your foam is fusible or not. So I use uh, sew-in foam, which is by any soft and stable. And the best way to get wrinkles out of sew-in foam is uh, just to iron it. Um, steam is also very helpful. So the steam in combination with the iron gets the wrinkles or fold lines completely out. So it's once again, a nice flat piece of foam. Of course, that won't exactly work uh, for the fusible foams, either the one-sided fusible or the two-sided fusible. However, um, if you get everything nice and flat with your hands before you go to attach the fabric to the interfacing, while you're fusing your fabric to the interfacing, it should have the same effect in regards to getting the fold lines out um, of the fabric. I feel like, especially with the Pellon Flex Foam, that would uh, work just as well as um, the sew-in foam, um, my usual method. But of course, you need to have that fabric on there first so the fusible doesn't get on your iron. Uh, Gwena says, old, wet, uh, old medicine bot bottle or old aspirin bottle. Yeah, those are great ideas. Um, certainly, I think even if uh, you're not taking medication, everyone usually has a bottle of aspirin or ibuprofen around. And even those little travel bottles, those would be great for... Um, uh, discarding old needles. Thoughtfully Stone says, Sarah, do you have gift cards on your website? If so, great gift and a way to add new bag ladies or dudes. Uh, that's a great idea. We do have gift cards in various amounts. Um, if you just Google, um, the easiest way would be just to Google Sew Sweetness and gift card and it should come up right up. It should be the first item in the search. And we have uh, different items from, I think $9 is the smallest amount because some of the PDF patterns are $9. We have $10 gift certificates, uh, $15 because some of the PDF pattern and video bundles are $15, all the way up to 80 or 100. Um, 80 because some a lot of people like to buy the minikins for gifts. Um, so there's an $80 option, all the way up to 100. Teresa says, have you ever created a bag and been surprised by the response? For example, thought a bag might not be as popular as it was. For sure, all the time. And I think uh, last year's minikins bundle was a really great illustration of that. So um, some of the patterns in last year's minikins that I was most excited about uh, we're just okay. I mean, I saw a lot of people make them, but the ones that I thought were um, almost too simple and uh, people might not like them or might like the more detailed patterns better, um, they liked the very simplest one the best. Uh, I feel like the most people made that one. Um, the I Spy Pouch is the one I'm talking about. That was sort of my, um, I don't want to say standby pattern, but it was uh, not my most detailed and the pattern that probably took the least amount of work. So um, there's always surprises, and um, I think that'll be the case in this year's Minikins bundle as well. Kathy says, would you consider showing suggested faux leathers to coordinate with your cork? That's a good question. I hadn't ever thought of that before. Um, yeah, I can, I'll think about that for a future show for sure. All right, I see Danny is scanning all the questions. I see a lot of really detailed and long questions and comments there, so that's really good. Keep them coming. Lois says, can the airplane bag be altered to use all cork instead of cork and fabric? It sure could. Um, you won't need to make any uh, changes if you're using cork for the body of the bag because it'll just get sewn into the seam allowance as always. Um, you can either, uh, no, I would, I, would, I would sew it exactly the same actually now that I'm thinking about it. I'm not sure if I've actually seen an all cork airplane bag, but that would be really interesting. I've definitely seen a lot with uh, quilting cotton for the main fabric and cork for the bottom accent and, and the handle. All right, Mark says, hey, bag dudes and bag ladies, Mark from Illinois. Yeah, Mark, I, I don't know if Mark saw, but... He just logged in, yeah. Oh, Danny says Mark just logged in, but Mark... I'm guessing. Okay, he he's guessing. Uh, Mark, you won uh, last week's giveaway for the Minikin season two, so 
Uh, congratulations and thanks for uh, joining us for the live chat. Uh, Danielle says, I'm very, very, very bad. I just throw my used needles in the trash. Don't judge me. <laughs> it happens. I know we're all in a hurry sometimes and uh, I don't know. Yeah, things come up, things happen. <laughs> I was right. Mark says, hey everyone, just made it better uh, late than never. Uh, oh, Danny Danny likes to be right, so he, he likes to put comments on there, uh, people confirming his uh, smartness. Last question. All right, Laura says, did you make your shirt? I love it. Thank you so much, Laura. I actually did make this a few years ago. Um, pff, the pattern is escaping me right now, uh, but this is a rayon fabric designed by Anna Maria Horner. And I super love this fabric. She designs gorgeous prints, especially with florals. And I just love the colors. Um, the charcoal gray with the pink looks really cute. And it's a really comfortable shirt to wear. I haven't worn it in a while, but pulled it out today. Gave it a little bit of iron and uh, looked uh, good enough for the show at least. All right, uh, let's get over to this week's giveaway. Again, the giveaway prize for tonight is a Minikin season two bundle. So that, that the bundle doesn't come out till the end of October but all winners will be uh, receiving coupon code as soon as it comes out, so their bundle will be, will be for free. So the giveaway question, all you have to do is let me know in the comments to answer the answer to this question. What is your favorite thing about autumn? So it's starting to get cool around here in Chicago, and I'm thinking about hot chocolate, lots of soup. I love wearing boots with jeans, so probably the boots with jeans is my favorite part about autumn. So let me know the answer to that question and I'll draw one lucky winner at the end of the day this Saturday and I'll announce that on that winner's name on next Sunday's show. So again, thank you so much for joining me for Social Sunday. If you were here at the beginning of the show, thanks for sticking around through our technical difficulties. I hope you have a great week. I'll see you on Tuesday, this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. We'll be having our live panel for the Etsy sellers and the people that sell custom bags. So if you ever had any questions about how much to price your bags at, where do you get supplies, how do you sell bags online or in person, be sure to stay tuned for this Tuesday. So I'm Sarah Lawson, have a great week and happy sewing. Bye everyone.